All right, so first time since watching the film and meeting with players, obviously disappointing loss. Um, unfortunately, it really is, you know, what we talked about during the week. You know, if you go into that place with the number one team in the country and you don't play really well in all areas, um, don't execute and make, make mistakes, you know, they'll knock you down really quick, which is what happened. Um, they got great coaches, great players. They came to play. Um, I'm sure last year's game, you know, was in their head defensively, especially. And, you know, hats off to them for doing a great job. Um, so we got to get back to work. You know, we've, you know, addressed what we need to as what we need to work on to improve. Like I've told our coaches before, I wish that you opened the season with Alabama every year. So then, you know, if you're not playing right, you're not playing with good fundamentals, you're not playing physical, you get exposed and, you know, instead of, you know, being able to get by with some stuff, you know, until the fourth game of the year. So hopefully we'll get better. You talked a lot after the game about the uh, offensive line. Just just when you watched the tape back, how much of it was schematic, how much was talent? Just Just what did you see that can be fixed? Well, we're always looking at, you know, schematical things we can do better and, you know, could have. Um, you know, it appears to me they really, you know, vanilla down, did not play a lot of different things defensively and got their cleats in the grass and um, much different than the year before where, you know, they were trying to line up and get things done. Um, you know, it's, it seemed very different. And so, you know, when those guys line up and their cleats are in the grass, you know, they're got really good players and 31 dominated us, whether it was, you know, coming down to the guard or, or the tackle. Um, great player. I think 10 has made them a lot better because he's a great player and it seems, you know, he really gets them lined up really well, you know, which has always been a key, I feel like, to that defense, you know, having a really good player at that spot to do that. Just kind of flipping the page to Arkansas, your thoughts on them, um, you know, where, where you see the keys to that that being going into Saturday. Well, this is the SEC and the SEC West. You know, you go play the number one team, now you come home to, you know, a top 15 team that, you know, obviously, you know, struggled last week against, uh, I think, you know, what it appears during the bye of watching people and stuff like that, you know, you got – two super elite teams this year, um, you know, with great players, both sides, but especially defense. And then it seems like you know, there's kind of a drop off. So, you know, gauging them in that game, everyone has struggled. You know, Georgia's got great players and exposes people. So prior to that, they were playing extremely well. Um, you know, they run the ball really well. They don't give up explosive plays. I think they're second in the country in pass defense. You know, so this is a scheme we struggled with a year ago. You know, we basically switched to it pretty much on our defense because um, it's really good and, you know, they do a great job and they play super hard. Lane, you mentioned the analytics on the fourth down calls uh, Saturday. What is the process on your staff for consuming the data, analyzing it, then presenting it to you? Well, <clears throat> you know, on top of it, we get a, I call it like our report card, you know, yesterday where it, you know, goes over every situation, you know, verifies, you know, what you should have done and whether you did it. And um, so that book comes early in the week. And that is based off of the opponents we talked about a lot. It's based off of the opponent, how you're playing, who you're playing, um, you know. And so I think really to sum the whole thing up, you know, the question got asked to me about, well, were you just doing that because it was Alabama? You know, were you being – you know, aggressive. No, that was all analytics and following it. And I think in those games, because I've been in those discussions when you're in the rooms, all right, what are we going to do? We're playing, we're the heavy underdog. You know, let's just keep it close, you know, so it doesn't look as bad, you know, and punt the ball away. Well, we don't play that way. And I don't think when you're a heavy underdog, you win that way, you know, especially with a good quarterback. So, you know, we, we followed them and they didn't work the year before they did. And then we had press conference, everybody thought it was brilliant. So that that's what it is. And I said it like blackjack, you know, 
and there's five dollars out there everybody hits when they're supposed to on 16 you know then they got all this money out there they're supposed to hit they know it but they don't because they get scared so that's kind of the comparison in your decisions during the game how much do you lean on the analytics versus feel of the game do you change up in, in that way yeah i have the in analytic at that point told to me you know the ball's right there and so it can even tell you on the first down you know each first down that you make what you need to get you know three or less so if you get the fourth and three or less you should go um so you know usually follow that there is a feel sometimes um to a game and sometimes you even go above it which we did this year there was a time we were supposed to punt we were playing so well on offense we went for it and we weren't supposed to you know so and it worked so there is a feel to it yeah when you've got a game like this one coming up where both teams are coming off of pretty big losses does anything change feeling wise when it's just two teams that are trying to rectify last week does that affect anything at all no, obviously not in preparation um, maybe on the outside <clears throat> you know because both teams struggled a week ago versus the two best teams in the country, you know, but still a matchup of top 20 teams, um, you know, that have come a long ways, you know, in two years, especially them. You know, this was a team that, you know, two years ago struggled to play any game close. I remember, you know, losing by a couple scores to North Texas. So um, Sam has done an unbelievable job. The Arkansas game last year was was a tough one for Matt, but it seemed like it was kind of a, a pivotal moment for him. How, how did he sort of handle everything during that game, and, and how did he kind of handle everything that came afterward? Well, I think that game taught him a lot. Uh, I think it ha I think it helped a little bit in this one. You know, when this game wasn't going really well, you know, he forced one, but outside of that, you know, he really, you know, scrambled back and got two yards. It doesn't look pretty, you know, but. Um, you know, the sack cause fumble, but outside of it, you know, there's obviously a big difference. He threw no interceptions versus six. So, um, you know, I think you learn from it and will be tested this week because I wouldn't think they'd change. Do you have an update on Mango yet? Uh, we do not. Hopefully he plays. Anything on Springer? Same. <coughs> Two questions. The first one, what have you seen out of K.J. Uh, Jefferson on film? How does he kind of jump out to you? Yeah, he's made big plays uh, with play action or kind of trick double move type plays um, and obviously runs the ball really well. And I don't know what he weighs. It looks like he weighs 250. So, you know, that's a that's an issue tackling this guy and bringing him down. And that uh, got a lot of play during the game, after the game. Your CBS <coughs> interview, was that up just – off the cuff, you had to say something, or where did that popcorn line come from there? That's a good question. So, um, as you guys know, I tell it like it is, good and bad. You know, that was not premeditated. Um, sometimes you get caught up in emotions, and I just heard something when I was yelling in the locker room and someone saying that, and I didn't even know why it came out. Um, and I actually said to Levy, I got the headset, I said, I just said something really stupid. You better score a lot of points. <laughs> So, and I didn't realize it was the last question either. You know, they were calling for kickoff return. I think there was 30 seconds on the clock and the refs were calling for. So I literally didn't know there was another question. And when I found out afterwards, you know, that that looked rude, which it did, um, you know, I contacted Jamie to make sure she knew that was not on purpose. So um, to apologize for that, that was not done on purpose at all. Looked like it though, I saw it. Coach, how do you balance? And then I said at halftime to Labby, I go, it looks like we didn't pl plug the microwave in, buddy. <laughs> how do you balance going up-tempo uh, when you're in a situation on short yardage situations and not having someone like Snoop in, not allowing the defense to substitute, to actually put him in? That's a great question, and we talk about that, you know. You give up a lot when you sub because now they can bring in bigger people. You know, they can get aligned. And, um, you know, over time we've been really good in those situations. That was discouraging when they stopped us in short yardage, you know. Um, and I even got discouraged why we threw later on another one. You know, unfortunately you don't get to look at the tape 
right at that time to realize, hey, there's one thing that that happens on it. Not only is it a first down, that stop, you know, on the first year is the touchdown, you know, and the guy makes an unbelievable play on it. Um, so, you know, that's why you wish you, you could see the replays to know that. And we really should have kept running it in short yardage, as strange as that seems. Wayne, you mentioned after Saturday's game, you were not pleased with the offensive line play in that game. What did the film show you? What What were the issues? I didn't tell your old line guy at heart. You always have old line questions. Um, you know, that's the ultimate test, you know. I mean, I just watched Georgia, you know, the first quarter, you know, to watch Arkansas's offense. So, you know, Alabama and Georgia, you know, if you sign the best players, especially on defense, over years and get all the five-star players, it starts to show up, you know, and um, you see that happen with both both teams. So to answer your question, we struggled. We struggled up front, um, you know, in a number of matchups. So this is what it is. Uh, two questions here. Uh, first one, Jarian kind of had a, a rough game number-wise. I know you sounded pretty upset after that fourth down play. I don't know if he got another carry uh, in the game after that. Was that situational? Was that based on situation or was were you upset with kind of what you were seeing from him? No, that wasn't on that. Um, <clears throat> and 10 made a great play, you know. We short motioned the back over here and he ran like he thought he was going all the way out and then ran into it. So, you know, that was is what it is. But that was not because of that. And then I think later in the game it was really um, Harlem was running really well, and he, he one of our few guys that played well and you know played like he belonged on that field. And then the other one, uh, when we had Levy in here a couple months ago, he sounded pretty optimistic that John Rice was going to be a, a pretty big contributor. I'm just kind of curious where John Rice is at in terms of kind of making a, a bigger impact. I figured that would come. I mean, like I've said, those don't come as much when you score all the time. So. Fair question, and um, you know it's tough to move positions, and you're backing up, you know Drummond, you know one of our best players. So um, it's not a, ideal for him. He was backing up, you know, arguably the best quarterback in the country, and now he's backing up one of the best slots. So um, not ideal for him. Going off that, did you like what you saw from Jaden and Dennis in this game, or kind of what do they need if they got to keep stepping up? Yeah, you know, Janice had the penalty early, not getting a line, which is what we do, obviously, is trying to go fast, and they're, they're not aligned on defense. And, um, you know, but he did some good things. Um, Danis made the big catch, you know, so that was good to see. And um, we've said it for two years now, we need – better play out of our backup receivers because our guys play too much again this year. And you see it with 13. Braylon's tired in the game. He does not look like the Braylon we've seen before, you know, running by people. 